two Agile for SMEs. Um, now the, the first thing um, that I want to move on to um, is what is Agile and what does Agile mean to all of us in the room today? It's used a lot in business terms now. Um, you've read, I've read about it in the uh, Financial Times, it's in the Times, a lot of um, organisations have that. We need to be agile. A lot of the large scale organisations are realising that entrepreneurs and SMEs like ourselves are actually a far more agility movement than perhaps some of the larger scale organisations. So, so I put a few uh, little pictures up on the screen there. What, what does agile mean? Blackbird over on the, the right hand side there. Um, very agile at balancing on a very, very narrow branch um, in the rowan tree in my front garden, um, pecking his way through what was the last of the red berries on the tree that was actually taken just last week. <coughs> um, this one down here, um, that little person right at the top there was me, um, a few years ago now, but that's the top of what's called the cobbler um, in Scotland. It takes quite a bit of agility to perhaps climb to the top of uh, that peak. You actually go along here and then climb through a little bowl before you climb up that side. So it's quite a few people get to the top and look down and go, mm, I'm not going over there. Um, but it's absolutely stunning, as you can imagine, to be able to stand on the top up there. So there's a, an element of agility. And up at the top, we've got a crocodile. We'll leave the crocodile just now and we'll come back to him. So <coughs> to help me move on, what I'd appreciate is what sort of things does Agile mean to you? So, Nicola, would you like to volunteer any adjectives or words, or when I say what is Agile and you saw it on the topic today, what did you, what, what words spring to mind for you? I'm going to change the pen because that one's not writing very well. Anyone else? Um, adaptability. Adaptability. I mean, that, that's a really, really good one in that actually when we're starting to look at what does Agile mean to our businesses, it's about being able to be responsive to the changing environment. You've maybe got products or services that your businesses supply, but if the market changes and you don't change with the times, what's going to happen to our businesses? Uh, we only need to look at perhaps Nokia. Blockbusters, you know, are they on our high streets anymore? I bet if I asked everyone around the room how many of us had a Nokia mobile phone 10 years ago, <coughs> we'd be into the high 90% probably in terms of those of us. If I ask that question today, the answer is likely to be very, very different because they didn't change with the times. They weren't responsive enough to actually see people start to do things differently. So, one of the words that was actually on our screen here, somebody did say adaptability. Um, Dinkiem was not a word I was expecting to get up on our screen. Um, I spent a number of years living in West Africa and um, there's what's known as the Adinkra symbols. And the symbol um, here is actually Dinkiem, which is the symbol for adaptability in Ghana and in West Africa. And um, that was why I made a crocodile on the previous slide. I did say we would come back around to why I picked up a, a crocodile on the slide. Because actually, a crocodile lives in the water, yet it breathes the air 
and it's, it's sort of demonstrated its ability to adapt to circumstances and change to be able to cope in different environments. And as you can see there, according to Darwin's Origin of the Species, it's not the most intellectual of the species that survives. It's not necessarily the strongest of the species that survives. It's the species that survives. It's the one that can adapt and adjust to a changing environment <coughs> in which it finds itself. And that's very, very true for ourselves running small businesses as well. If we don't adapt and change, then, and ideally with agility, then we're going to struggle. So a little bit about agile. Um, around the room I know we've got, got a mixture. I think we do have some people that have got more of a technology or perhaps IT background who may well have heard of the Agile Manifesto before. But um, back in 2001, a group of what were IT and software developers who were working and starting to work in the, the Agile space got together, they actually they went skiing. Um, they, they tend to do that sort of thing, they're a bit agile, they don't do stuffy suits and ties in an office. They went skiing um, over in America and um, they signed and they came up with what was the Agile Manifesto. And um, I'm not going to, to bore you all with an IT software development speak about it, um, but there, there are some key things that they actually all signed up to in terms of agreeing. And what's been discovered over the last 15 years is that although they started out life in the software development industry, actually it applies perfectly well to business change activities, to projects in uh, other areas, to business development. Um, so we can learn some of the, the tools and techniques that are used perhaps when you're developing software actually to look at our business as well. And I did take the liberty of changing one of these, which actually specifically when they wrote it in 2001 referred to software, but even the, the, the team that signed the Agile Manifesto have actually, if there was one thing they wanted to adapt and change, it's to refer to solutions rather than software. So on the left of the screen, we've got a number of things, which are what the Agile Manifesto says, we value the things on the left over the things on the right. It doesn't say that the ones on the left are all we do and everything over here, you know, we don't do any documentation or contracts, we don't need those. What it says is we value the things on the left over the things on the right. So individuals and interactions, it's all about the people. Um, so actually individuals and interactions are valued over strictly following processes and tools and ticking off the box as we go through things. That working software, which was what they actually wrote when they wrote the, the Agile Manifesto, a working solution gives more value than having comprehensive documentation about it. You could have a whole tomb of documentation about the products or services that you're supplying, but if you haven't actually got something to sell, what's the point of having that big document that tells you all about it? Customer collaboration, again, it's that people side of things. When you're developing any of your services, if you think it's great, that's fine. But if your customers or your potential customers haven't been involved in that, then maybe you've developed something that nobody wants. Yeah? So actually, you need to collaborate with your customers, with your end users, um, to make sure that what you're developing and delivering is actually what they want and need. And that might be something that's going to evolve over time, um, as opposed to in the old days, perhaps spending, if it was a large scale organisation, you could spend a year negotiating a contract with, before you even start doing any work. You know, and only after that year do you start giving some value to the business by doing some of the work. And the fact that the last one there, responding to change over following a plan. Now, I've worked in project management nearly all of my career. Um, and lots of people, uh, but my son is very fond of saying, but mum, do we need to have a plan for everything? When I say, oh, what are we going to do today? Or what are we doing at the weekend? So, oh, you know, I'm not part of a project management plan. You know, we don't need every minute of every day planned out in detail for everyone with you telling me what we're doing when. Actually, you want to be able to respond to change. That doesn't mean you don't have a plan and that you don't have a vision for what you want to do. And, you know, I do love having a structure and an idea of where things are going. But when you look further afield, it's at a higher level. So, 
the Agile Manifesto um, basically set out a mindset and a way of believing and working um, that can be adapted to suit your needs. And across the industry, Agile is a bit of an umbrella term. And there are lots of different tools and techniques around that. There's very specific um, techniques that can be recommended through Agile Project Management. And that's a, one set of courses that I'm involved in running, which gives a very, very good structure to perhaps some larger scale, more complex projects. If you look down at smaller scale things like ourselves, there's a lot of iterative tools and, and different techniques that can be used. But what I want to take us on to today is just a few ideas that come from this, this philosophy and mindset of using agile techniques that I think are really good for all of yourselves in the room and for your business. So you can see here I've got, um, we've had a, an initial business idea. Perhaps you're already running the business and this is adding new products into your, your business idea. Um, and really what you want to do is have a good outline of what you're aiming to do before then moving in to develop a cycle of iteration so that you can evolve that solution into something over a period of time that you refine as you build up on it. So for example, um, I've one of my colleagues, um, just taking this away from anything related to IT, one of my, my colleagues um, wanted a redesign of a t-shirt. She was um, she's a senior lecturer at Teesside University locally and she'd been given all standards, you know, big white, typical scoop neck t-shirt to wear to an event um, that the university were running. Now the event was being run down at the Cornshed Music Festival um, during the summer. So it's quite hip and trendy. Um, she, she came to me and she said, I don't want a boring t-shirt. I want something a bit, you know, hip and trendy and it, she was stuck with the fact that it was a purple t-shirt Teesside University that they had to wear because they were manning one of the stalls at the event and she said here's a t-shirt that I'd like it to look like so she had an idea of what her end, end vision was but really she wasn't quite sure she, you know this was something that she thought she might like so what we did was we had our outline idea we developed a solution I didn't quite release it to market because she was actually physically there. We did this in a very rapid process. Um, we did some modifications to the t-shirt. So first of all, we said, right, well, let, let's lower the neckline and let's, let's change this style. And then we, we shaped it. Um, and as we evolved, each time she was then actually considering it more, saying, well, I really like that, but tell me more. Now that you've done that, can we change this? And so we ended up over a rapid period of time, actually evolving and changing, so that she ended up with something which was exactly what she was looking for. But at the beginning, she didn't realise she wanted a crop top with a sleeveless t-shirt. She started out saying, I just want something more fitting. But as we evolved the solution, and she saw what some of the, the possibilities were, it shaped her way of thinking. Thinking maybe a bit more um, everyday business, and it links in with some of the things maybe uh, Matt will be talking around marketing. Perhaps you've got a company website. So evolving your business idea. Don't wait until you've absolutely done every single bit about your website. You want to develop the outline idea, start your development, get your website live to the market, get some feedback so people are starting to see your, your website, interact, come back to say, oh, I couldn't find something about how do I buy this? Or perhaps someone comes back and says, oh, it would be really nice if I could have some packaging on that development, on that product that you're selling. Can you add that into your website? And so you evolve your website over a period of time. It's not something that stays, stays stable. So it's taking this idea into everything you're doing. If you de develop and design whatever your product or service is, and you wait until you think it is absolutely perfect, before you release it to the market and start selling it, what you'll find is you've probably missed the boat. Someone else has got there first. Somebody else has set up a similar company and they've already started selling a similar product or service. If you get out there when you've got your, what's often referred to as a minimal viable product, so you've got the, the must have, you've got something that works, but then you can add more value to it over a course of months or years beyond then actually you're starting to get a return 
you're starting to get sales, you're starting to get profit from that minimal viable product that you can then evolve into something better over a period of time. So it's one of the key fundamentals of working in an agile way. And we talked here about being able to be responsive, and being able to build in change is absolutely key, that you're not committed to, oh, I've done all this design work up front. What you're doing is you're saying, actually, I'm going to get a minimum viable product, I'm going to get something out there, and then I'm going to evolve it over time. One of the other things that um, Agile encourages us to do is to be very visual. Now, you might think that given that this came from a, an IT background, that everything would be really techy and everything's got to be in the computer and lots of spreadsheets and complicated diagrams that's all hidden away and filed in a database somewhere. But actually it's not. One of the, the things that Agile really, really encourages to help people think more visually is to actually have visual boards. Now, this example here is perhaps having a mood board. You know, if you're developing something new and you, if you, this is looking at a, a craft room or a craft shop, they're actually saying, well, our spring range, we're going to have these, we think we might have these colours. And by having something visual on their wall, as you're doing your other work, you've got that to remind you, why am I in business? Why am I doing this? You know, and it, it's that constant reminder to help you be, be official. And um, in a similar way, if you're actually planning some of your work, you heard me talk about project plans earlier on. If you work out in a lot of high complex areas, you might think, oh, we've got a software program that does all of that. Well, actually, these things here are used all across the high tech IT industry. And it's, it's key, my, my trick to you, go buy yourself some post-it notes, because they're very, very cheap and very, very powerful. And one of the things you can do is create what's called, in the, the lean environment, a Kanban board. So you can have, pick up the one that's not working very well. We can have our to-do list. You can have your work in progress list. And you can have it done. Now you can make this more complicated um, depending on your business or your environment. But what you can then do is, using your post-it notes, you can design something that's going to work for you. You might colour code it on types of tasks. So for example, we could say we've got things that we need to do. We've got September's accounts, we've got our tax return, we've got some filing to do. So you can see I'm going for a set of greens here are all kind of admin type tasks. Summer 2016 collection, we've got to build up our ideas, start creating our mood board. We need to check our website stats. We need to update the website because it's a bit out of date. <coughs> and a whole set of, of other to-do items. Now, by colour coding them, you know, by grouping them into different types of tasks that you have to do in your business, you get a very visual impact on this business. What's the area do you think that they're maybe not very good at doing? The green area. Yeah? So they then, you know, you, you have your to-do items or your work in progress. So for this one, we're busy making a number of, of different stock items, revising things. We've done some invoices. We're, we're, we're working on ordering some stock. We're part way through keeping our Facebook page up to date, so it's a work in progress. And then the good side, you can actually move off. What are the things that we've actually completed? And they would go into your done column. So for example, if you know, it's coming up to Christmas, we've made sure we've got our Christmas catalogue sorted out. That's all done and dusted. Twitter. We've actually set up all our Twitter feeds for the next month. So it's, it's done, we don't need to worry about that. And it will fall into next month, it will come back into our to-do items. So straight away, you've got very, very visual and non-techy way of showing what is the flow of tasks that I need to do for my business. Now, if you've got a team of people, you can get 
individuals can actually be self-motivated. I think um, we talked about empowering on, in terms of one of the, the adjectives for things linked to agility. People can actually come along and say, well, actually, do you know what? I'll do all the updates on this. Might add my initials onto there and move it into our work in progress. And I, I could put, right, I'm doing that one. So your team can move across and add their initials. And someone else says, well, I've actually done that task. <coughs> so you can then update, um, perhaps, the way to keep track of what have I actually achieved this month. It doesn't need to be high tech. Take a photograph of it. Get your phone out your pocket. Every Friday afternoon, photograph your board. You can use the wall in your uh, house if you're a small business and you're uh, working from home. You might actually just have that simply stuck up on a wall. There are el electronic boards that you can use as well. Are these good? They're probably not as special. You don't see them as much. Whereas having something like this, sometimes referred to as an information radiator, everyone in the office, as they walk past, can see what's going on and you can see that progress. So moving into the, uh, the last sort of t technique and area um, that I was going to cover today, I'm not taking you all on holiday, I'm afraid. Um, much as it might be quite nice to go off and uh, visit Moscow for a quick holiday. Um, when we're doing all of this work with our to-do items and our, our work in progress, one of the things we all struggle with is, what's the top priority? What do I need to do? And Moscow, as a technique rather than a place, is where we can think about what can we do. Has anyone heard of the Moscow technique before? Right, Moscow prioritization. It stands for must have, should have, could have, won't have this time. Doesn't it all doesn't necessarily mean won't have at all. But what it means is you can actually go through, if we think back to that evolving solution, you can look at what are the absolute must have priorities that we need to have for that minimal viable product to get us through that first cycle of getting our product out to market. And then you, what are the should haves? What are the things that would be nice to have? So if we think back to the example of you maybe developing your company website, what are the must-have things that you want to have on there? You want to have the company name, you want to have some of your contact details, a little bit about what you, you do. That would actually be your minimal viable product, a one-page website that you can go live with. Whereas actually, you probably should have some subsequent pages or some extra information, some case <coughs> studies, some examples, perhaps even if it's an online business, you want some the ability to order online. But actually, you don't need that for your first release. So they might be should-haves or could-haves. And depending on how much time or budget you have, you might actually add those in as extra features as you evolve your solution over a period of time. So as a, a technique, Moscow is a fantastic tool to help you think about all of the things you're doing every day and every week in the business in terms of prioritizing really what is the must-have things that we need to do you know what's going to stop the business if I don't do it that's your must-have items should have it's important but not vital I mean one of the things this has obviously come from a software development point of view but a lot of the time if you, if you think about some of the software packages that you might have used they're probably packed full of features that you've never used <coughs> you think about creating a presentation like this, there's lots of things that are in there that I haven't buy, I haven't got anything flying in from the side or any of the, the extra gadgets around the outside. Those are all perhaps should have or could have extra functionality. And it's actually been proven that 60% of often what's developed in software is very, very rarely used. So by focusing on your must-have and your minimum viable product to get you out to market and selling things through your business, actually what you're doing is you're, you're making the most of the bits that are going to add, add real value. So, just taking us towards the, the end then, the, the, those are just sort of three of the, the techniques that I think are, are great for any business, um, or indeed in your personal life, to think about actually using in terms of 
adding value and you know sort of by evolving things from a starting point you're adding value earlier in the life cycle of being able to to sell or produce something but working with agility and having that agile mindset it's not just something that you tick the boxes yes and following this process you actually have to be agile and it's not just a one-off activity you actually have to start to think that way that you're happy to accept change you know change isn't bad you want to evolve things and, and move so it, it's all about reflecting looking back and adapting as you move forward and again um, i brought in just at the, the end there another of the adinkra symbols um, which actually is a, a goose looking backwards um, and learning from the past. So to enable them to move forward, they're looking back and reflecting on the past. And as the Adinkra symbol, that, that one's called Sankofa, which are they're two of my favourite Adinkra symbols um, from my time living in, in Ghana, West Africa. So just bringing us towards a, a close, that's been a, a whistle-stop tour through some of the key points of bringing more agility into our businesses and to keep us fresh, keep us moving forward and help us gain real business value earlier in the process rather than perhaps leaving it too long and not having that agility to change and move forward. Can just draw to a close. Is anyone got any questions or anything they'd like to bring up about uh, some of the, the techniques we've talked about? The, the board here is yeah. using, I've recently started using a, a, a system called Asana mm -hmm. where certain staff members are, are on there and, and if I say I want this done by a certain yeah. staff member, if they, they get emailed and they but you, you mentioned that it's not quite as visible and obviously it isn't because you just get an email and you don't have to look anything. That's right. So, I mean, it's. You prefer, you prefer this to that sort of I, I mean, it, it is. I actually like post-it notes on the wall. I mean, I was I was doing some training at um, Barclays Bank earlier this week, and a lot of the and it was in their their software development teams, and yes, they might well use electronic tools as well using boards like that, but actually, you walked around the office, and you saw big whiteboards with post-it notes on them, um, a lot of companies nowadays have, have you come across white walls? Um, where actually the whole wall is a whiteboard. Um, and so actually having that, it's sometimes referred to as a team board, having that whole wall visible that you can come up with, you know, if it's a whiteboard, you've got your, your white markers and you can have it all drawn up there, similar idea. You might have, you know, you might have extra columns per team member so that they're physically moving things across. But actually, that non-techy visible is, you know, is really good. If, as a company, you are keen to use some of the electronic tools, then what I would highly recommend is, is one of the large screen, you know, sort of on the wall. So you're still getting it visible. So you've got, you know, sort of the, if I um, look at the, the electronic one that I showed there, you could have that displayed on a wall. And so people are still getting the chance to actually see it. I think it, it just really brings things to, to life. Um, I think for staff members as well, it's a real sense of satisfaction if they can move a post-it, come to do or work in progress to do, as opposed to just clicking on, yes, I've done that job. Yeah, It's done. It's a bit more, you know, like, I've done I, it, it's I've a sense it. of, yeah. it is. I mean, I, I've, you know, I would always say you want to have them in that done box, but when you're then, in effect, archiving them out of done, that physical act of taking it off, scrunching it up, it's done. 